Welcome to the Lean Out Your Business podcast, a show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs accelerate business growth and simplify success. I'm your host, Krista Grasso, and I've been working with businesses for more than two decades to help them lean out and optimize what's working while eliminating anything that's not adding value. So if you are ready to get more time back in your day, more profit in your business, and to do business differently, growing and scaling on your terms, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. Today, I am so excited to be joined by Christina Pierce, and we are going to be talking about mindfulness and meditation and why it's so important for entrepreneurs and how it can really be helping us. So Christina, I'm so excited that you are here today, and we're going to dive in and learn all about you. But first, let me tell everyone a little bit about you. Um, So Christina is a guided meditation expert expert, a certified breathwork coach, and the creator of Original U.co Morning Meditations. She has led over 60 businesses, schools, and nonprofits on mindfulness practices in creating a wellness culture in the workplace. She's a former professor in yoga studies at Pratt Institute, and she's a recent graduate of the Happiness Studies Academy, which just has the best name ever. Um, And Christina is passionate about continuing to explore and discover what keeps life healthy, vibrant, and inspired. So Christina, I thought, why not start with that? Because I loved that about, you know, healthy, vibrant, inspired. Who doesn't want that, especially an entrepreneur? So what do you feel like actually makes that the case for us? What makes us feel and stay um, healthy, vibrant, and inspired? So I love that question and I feel that that question is, you know, going to be different for different people, but I think that there's, uh, you know, my answer to that would be something that I can see in a lot of people and it's not a sexy answer. I would say it's three things, but the first one is not necessarily the most sexiest answer, but um, what keeps life vibrant? you know, healthy and inspired is being centered first, knowing that you can always come back to center. And I mean, I think that we take that for granted and what that means, you know, Um, a lot of times, you know, we jump into things, we jump into our day, we jump into our work, we jump into, you know, relationships, but we don't actually take the time to kind of sit back and center ourselves and and centering ourselves, of course, comes back to mindfulness and just asking yourself, like, what do I need right now? How, How am I feeling right now? What is important for me right now? And how can I show up better by allowing myself to get centered? And there are practices we can talk about, but ultimately it's really just coming back to yourself and centering yourself before you jump into any any of those things. The second thing I would say is to stay curious. Stay curious about life. You know, curiosity is a really important thing to 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 have. And it it doesn't mean like and and about anything, really. It's like sometimes you think you know your partner so well, but you don't actually stay curious to why they they do what they do or what makes them tick or what makes them happy or what makes them sad. So staying curious in your life and is a really wonderful way to keep yourself expanding, keep your mind expanding, keeping yourself open to learning about those people or learning about something that you think you already know a lot about and going deeper with those things. And then the last thing I would say is um, about being willing and allowing yourself to be you know, willing to try something new, willing to see yourself differently, willing to try another approach, willing to listen to other people, willing to share, you know, the willingness is is really an important part because you could be two years old or you could be 92 years old. And if you're still willing, that is what I truly believe keeps life very healthy. It keeps us vibrant and it keeps us alive. 
Uh, I love so much of that. And it is true. It's so true, especially about the centered part where so often we just, we just go, we just get up and we go and we don't take that time to step back and think about what we actually want, why we want it, or to actually center ourselves. So I just, I absolutely love that. And of course, I mean, curious, it's all about that. I think that it just, it keeps things more fun and interesting when you're curious. So I love that perspective as well. You know, we want to stay fresh ourselves, right? We don't want to assume we know everything about everything. Um, you know, and it's better for our brains. It's healthier for our brains to, to you know, think, wait, maybe there's something more interesting about this that I'm not looking at. Or maybe even though I've been there before at that restaurant, you know, they have something different on the menu that I could stay open and curious about and, 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 and look into it. Curiosity is so important and so special. So, yes. Brilliant. Absolutely love it. And so before we dive in and start talking about a few more things, I just want to learn a little bit more about your journey and kind of what brought you to what you do and why are you so passionate about this? <laughs> wow, that's a big question. Um, well, I I feel that, you know, often I've had this question before and I think that I... I, for me, I believe it started with losing my mother when I was 19 years old. Um, and I think that at such a pivotal age when you're about to step into life and you're about to do things it, and not having, you know, my mother's guidance anymore, really understanding what death really means, I really wanted to understand how to live my life to my fullest potential and I also really didn't want to live my life in some ways the way she did, which was um, burning herself out, you know, helping everybody, pleasing everybody and, and working at a job that she hated working at for several years. And so I watched that, especially in my teenage years. And I was very clear that I wanted to, to do things differently, that I wanted to never walk into a job that I hated. Or, you know, I, I wanted to create a path that I felt was exciting or interesting or kept me feeling tuned in, you know. And, and then seeing her pass was, um, of course, very difficult and very emotional. But it also kept me, I think the opportunity in it was that it kept me open to like, this whole like life thing, it just seems like there's more to then meets the eye. There's there's more to this. And I w was curious, wanting to know what that was. And I found that, you know, through my years, even though I was following a path that I thought I wanted to follow, I became, you know, um, eventually became a sales rep for, for directors in New York City, um, which was a very high stress job, you know, finding work for directors. And I even though I was doing really, really well, I was burning out and every sale and every pitch and every trying to get more and more and more, anybody who works in sales um, in New York City can probably relate to some degree. And especially in back, back in that those days, because we weren't really using the internet the way we're using it now, but it was very challenging to, um, to, lit, to, to, to take care of myself and feel centered and feel grounded. And I knew that I was starting to walk down this path that was similar to what I, I noticed my mom was going through and I just could not do it. So I, I did a three, you know, I guess not 360, a 180 and decided to change my life and go into another direction, which led me into yoga, which led me into meditation and uh, the rest is history. Wow. There's so much that's just so beautiful about that story. A, I'm so sorry for losing your mom at such a young age, but I love how you really took the lessons from your time with her and then you leveraged that experience to really just create this amazing life. And I think there's a lot of beauty in that and a lot that so much of us can take from just the way that you approach that and let that shape what you do today. So that's pretty amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I always look at the whole picture, you know, our lives are not just, you know, we don't just arrive at something, we actually have to take this journey. And a lot of that journey has to be 
um, very difficult moments that you face your 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 mortality. And so um, I yeah, thank you. And I appreciate that. Yeah. And so let's dive a little bit deeper into mindfulness and meditation and the importance of it. And why is this something that we should be leveraging um, in our lives? Why is it something that can help us in our businesses? Yeah. So I think that meditation is a technology that needs to be incorporated in the world that we're in right now. Um, Because we're using technology in a way that Um, helps us speed things up, get information quicker, you know, respond to people faster. Um, And so I believe that we need to keep up with that. And and so our personal technology of meditation to take time to really understand what is important in our bodies, what is important in our thoughts, you know, and, and becoming really aware of that is you know, because there's mindfulness and there's meditation. And, you know, mindfulness is, is something you don't have to be sitting in a meditation to, to be mindful. It's just paying attention to the power that we have in the present moment. And it's really the quality of our attention that, that makes, that transforms things, you know? So for example, if I'm brushing my teeth every day, And I just am not paying, actually, this is literally what happened, you know, brushing my teeth every day and I'm not paying attention to how I'm brushing my teeth. I'm just kind of on autopilot. And so we do a lot of these things on autopilot. And for me in particular with brushing my teeth, I was realizing that I brush my teeth a little too hard and it's not really necessary, you know, but I, I guess in a way I was trained from very young to like really brush my teeth, but it's not it's, it's not good for my gums, you know, it's actually hurting my gums. So, you know, realizing that in a moment, you know, just the other day that like, I don't need to brush my teeth that hard. Like I don't need to, it's actually not helping me and it, it, it it's better. That's a mindful moment where you can transform any moment into a much more quality moment because you're bringing your attention and awareness to how you're doing things. Um, meditation is giving yourself some time to like shut your senses down and and go within yourself. And that's kind of more of a centering piece to me, in my opinion, where you're really allowing yourself to really kind of come to a place where you are, um, you know, sensing what's happening in your body. You're sensing your posture. You're sensing your breath. You're, um, sensing you're even becoming aware of maybe some thoughts that you have that that might not be serving you or might be interesting to notice but you are really you know coming into the present moment to allow the present moment to just be what it is and nothing else and not have all you know because most of us our thoughts are either in the future or they're in the past. And that's just kind of how we operate as humans, but we can, we can plug our awareness into the present moment. And um, we know that there's so many benefits to just taking some time to do that every day. Okay, so I have a question for you that is something that I really want to know, but I think others might want to know too. When you've got the hamster running a million miles an hour in your brain at all points in time, how do you really get to that place in meditation where you can quiet your mind and listen to yourself and listen to your body and turn off the hamster in the wheel? <laughs> what is your, your like best tips for getting there? So the first thing I would say about that is that you know, our minds were meant to think, right? They, 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 it's just kind of like the, how the heart is meant to beat. The mind is meant to think and it's meant to process information. It's very helpful for us for many reasons. Um, so we're not really like, our goal is not to try to stop the thinking from happening. Our goal is to recognize our, um, our power you know, and our power to bring our awareness and our attention to what's actually present for us in the moment. So I, it's, it's interesting. I, I answer this question differently almost every time. And the question comes to me very differently many times, but at the end of the day, most people want to 
um, they want to get rid of their thoughts. They want to just drop into this place where they're in, to, in no thought, in a space of no thought. And it is definitely possible. And it happens throughout the day. You know, when we're, uh, for example, when we're on autopilot and I am brushing my teeth, I'm doing something that is very routine. I don't have to think about brushing my teeth. I don't have to effort to do it. There are moments in my day where I can just be on autopilot. My body can respond and I don't have to think about it. And I can drop into spaces of no thought. Um, so when we are in seated meditation, often times what happens is when you sit and you close your eyes to meditate, all your thoughts will come up. You know, you've, you've eliminated one um, sense of stimuli. And so now, you know, your thoughts are like, great, now I have your attention. Listen, you know, all this stuff is coming up. And the, the key with meditation is to have a actual practice, something to anchor you in so that you can keep returning back to that practice. So if that practice is you're, you know, focusing on your breath, if that fat practice is focusing on your third eye between your eyebrows, if that practice is scanning through your body and your sensations and noticing the sensations, you just keep coming back to the practice and don't emphasize trying to stop thinking because what, what eventually will happen is that you will drop into this place that's kind of known as the gap. And the gap is, is like that place of no thought. It's where the thinking um, reduces to a minimal or nothing. And you are in this space where you can allow the magic of meditation to really, really um, give you the benefits. But that does not mean that even if you have thoughts coming up, the entire time that you're meditating, the entire time that you're trying to practice and focus on your breath, you're not getting benefits. Of course you are getting benefits and you are actually building more gray matter in the brain. And we want to build more gray matter in the brain because we, those are the, the this is the new territory for the brain to actually create changes and create shifts in how we, we operate in the world. So it's a really powerful thing to do, even if you are having a lot of thoughts come up. It's kind of like cleaning out your closet in a way. It's just like everything's kind of coming up, but your anchor is what keeps you back, coming back to the practice. And just a little bit of that every day is what actually makes these dramatic changes. They have a lot of research about these changes that, that you know, that um, benefits that people get from practicing regularly. And that's really kind of the goal that we, we want to try to get everybody to do. We want to make it so that it's almost like brushing your teeth every day. You need to, you need to do it because it actually, you start to feel and see the benefits in your daily life. Okay, that's great. And I love the way that you described that too, because I find I do have those moments where I I can clear my mind. But generally speaking, as soon as I get quiet, as soon as I take that time for myself, my brain just starts going like crazy. It's where I swear it's where some of my best ideas come from. <laughs> yes. And in actuality, a lot of our best ideas actually come from the no thought space. So we we get hits of insight when the brain when there's there's space when there's space those hits of insight you know it's kind of like when you lose your key or you lost something and you just you're like i don't know where it is and then you give up and then all of a sudden it kind of shows up you know meditation kind of is like that a lot of times it's like when you give it space insights will come to you insights will that's why often people will be like i was in the shower and i had this great idea it's like because you're doing something routine you're doing something that's very regular and you're you're you can drop into a place of no thought you know you might be thinking gosh what am i going to eat for lunch and then have an entirely not another thought um i need to you know get my car fixed today and in between those two thoughts, you might actually have a space where an insight will come in. So we we like insights. We like having epiphanies and revelations, but we actually allow the, the mind to, to kind of give us space when we sit in meditation. And we allow certain thoughts to come and go, 
and then we 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 are available to those insights. Because a lot of times you have all this stuff going on in your head, and those insights are there, but they can't get through. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like leaning out your mind. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right, right. So let's talk a little bit about routines. How do you really make this part of your daily practice? And how do you put those those solid routines in place? So I personally have my anchors, which is kind of what my meditation program is based on, which is um, Mondays and Fridays are my, like, I have to meditate on Mondays and Fridays. That's just my anchor. You know, I, I meditate several times throughout the day. Like I'll do many meditations. Um, but I have my anchors and those anchors are reinforced with reminders and, um, I put them into my calendar. I put them into my schedule. I think about them the night before, you know, if you are, um, serious about getting into the practice and you don't have to be serious, but like, if you're, you're really interested in having, you know, the benefits of meditation to help you in your life, if people have many people will say, you know, you should meditate more, you should do this more. And really it's, it's up to you to decide like how you want your routine and your structure to go. Yes. I would say meditating every day is ideal. Realistically. I know I don't meditate on the weekends. I many times on the weekends, I don't, I just let go. Um, but when it comes back to like Monday through Friday, that's when I feel like it, it, it's a good routine for me. So I'm very anchored into my routine. So the first thing I would say is, you know, set yourself up for success, put it in your calendar, put it in your, put reminders on your phone, think about it the night before so that you know that you are planning to, to have that as part of your routine. And that will definitely support you. The other thing I would say is that, you know, we have these, moments in the day where we transition from one thing to another. So for example, you wake up in the morning, you get out of bed, you, you know, you have your coffee or you have your shower, whatever it is that you, your routine is. So you're always like preparing and transitioning. And then, you know, you have your work time and then, you know, you're transitioning from your work time to lunch. And then from lunch, you're transitioning to your workout schedule, whatever, whatever it is. There are, in those transitional times are moments where you can center. So they may not necessarily be 20 minute long meditations, but they are they're, they're transitional times. And I find that those are really powerful times for you to, to enter into the next thing that you're going to do with mindfulness. So even if it's a two minute, uh, you know, timer that you put on your timer, like, you know, I'm about to eat lunch right now. Let me just take two minutes to center myself from that meeting. And, you know, I'm just going to give myself two minutes to sit back and, 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 you know, just get into a place of like, what was the meeting? I'm releasing it. Whatever happened in the meeting, I'm releasing it. I'm checking in with my breath, which is a huge anchor. And I, I can come back to talking about the breath, but those transitional times are great times for you to recenter yourself and you'll be surprised how you will show up more and you will perform better just because uh, you took two minutes to, to center yourself. Um, and I, I want to answer something that you asked me earlier, which I didn't really answer. Why do I think business professionals or entrepreneurs um, really need mindfulness practices? There's so many reasons. Um, you know, you become a better leader you become a better listener and you become, a, you, you become better at your performances and your tasks when you just take the time to do what I just said, which is to center yourself before you engage or you move into anything. And I think that entrepreneurs really want to be better leaders. They want to, they want to lead their own companies. They want to to understand um, how to really do things more effectively and efficiently. And how is it possible that you could do anything better and efficiently without being centered yourself? It's, it's, it's just like, what's the point of like, if you're full of anxiety and you're working on your thing and with full, 
obviously it's going to be better for you if you are in a relaxed state of mind. And so, and we know that you do better work when you're in a relaxed state of mind. So there, there are a number of reasons why entrepreneurs are a primary um, market of people that really, really need to consider uh, incorporating mindfulness practices into their business with their teams. It is not crazy woo woo stuff. You know, this is like taking a time to meditate before you have a meeting with your team is such a powerful thing to do for just four or five minutes and your team will appreciate it. And they'll actually speak from their heart with more clarity by just doing that. So, you know, there are lots of different ways that we can incorporate mindfulness into our businesses. And, uh, and I'm, I'm specifically talking about meditation because there's other little things, but um, it's, it's really just like the wave of the future is like using the technology of, of self-governance and um, self-awareness and bringing that into everything that we do. Yeah, I love that. And can you talk a little bit more about breathing? Because I know you're a certified breathwork coach as well. And you mentioned you were going to dive into that. So how does that play a role in either meditation or in just getting ourselves into that, that centered place throughout the day? You know, it's like the easiest thing that you could choose to do is to empower yourself with your breath and connect with your breath. And I think a lot of people underestimate what that can do for you just to take about three deep breaths, a minimum of three deep breaths. You can take as many as you need. But um, the breath is such an anchor for us. It really brings a lot of clarity and it is the centering piece to meditation. There's no, there's no um, possibility of doing any kind of meditation whatsoever without acknowledging the power of the breath and what the breath can actually do. There's a number of different ways you can use the breath and they do different things. You know, speeding the breath up, you know, oftentimes energizes the body. So doing things, you know, breath work that really pumps the body up wonderful you can you can use that sometimes too because sometimes we have this ex excess of energy and we need to use our breath in a in a more powerful way or we're about to work out and we need to have that like empowered breath to help give us more more energy for our workout and sometimes like at nighttime slowing the breath down is much better for us because it allows us to get in that parasympathetic um, state where we can actually relax and, and get into our sleep. And um, it's such an important understanding of how you use your breath to affect your body, you know? So the breath is the anchor of all things. And it's a simple thing that if you are even, uh, you know, if for God forbid, but if you're in a hospital bed and you can't move anything, you can still use your breath to circulate and move things through your body, calm yourself down, give yourself more energy. So to me, the breath is, is, is the medicine. It is the medicine that we, we, we truly need. Yeah, it's made a really big difference for me. It's something that one of my former clients introduced me to, and I really tried to make that part of my practice. And I find during the day, sometimes my computer will crash or something will happen, and I'll have those moments where I'll find myself getting really frustrated, and I just stop and I take a deep breath or five. And it's just amazing the difference that it makes and how you can just feel very grounded and feel really steady throughout the day without so much of the highs and lows and dips and emotions and all the things. I always bring it back to breath and I just feel like it makes such a big difference. So I love everything that you shared there. Yeah. Um, tell us more about Original You. Tell us about your program. Tell us about your world and what's coming up for you next that you're excited about. Thank you. Well, um, I'm very excited about Original You. It is in its beta state. So um, I'm excited. And I created this program really as a way to anchor in those Mondays and Fridays because, you know, Monday is the Sunday night, between Sunday and Monday night, is the highest levels of anxiety that most human beings have. 
because we're all sort of trained that, oh my gosh, it's Monday morning, the Monday blahs, the Monday blues. But if you can sort of get out ahead and start, you know, your, your week, just dropping in, centering yourself, you know, I, I do a contemplative practice. So that means that we contemplate um, a few things. We contemplate a question I might ask, and then we use the techniques of breathing to drop into our meditation, but it allows us to get clear on our intentions for the week. And then Fridays, um, we have another meditation that closes off the week, helps us kind of release everything that we sort of like built up about the week and get us, you know, free for the weekends. My goal is to um, have this be a program that has meditation every day of the week but I, you know, I feel like the most important part of starting out is like if you can commit to two days a week and you can just shift your whole week by, you know, focusing on that theme or focusing on that mindfulness practice, um, because we offer a mindfulness practice for the week, then you're already like changing, you know, a majority of your year by anchoring in those days and really getting clear about what your needs are. So um, that's, that's, that's it. There's more developments that I'm really excited about. Um, I'll, I'll say one thing about nighttime practices. That's really important to have some nighttime practices. Like just last night, I was like on the computer and getting really excited. And I looked at the time and I said, because my deadline is 1130. And, you know, that, that might be late for some people, but 1130 is like, you know, I can be on the computer until like, you know, one in the morning. So, you know, by, by 11 o'clock, I need to be off the computer because I need 30 minutes to like brush my teeth, get ready for bed, you know, um, get some water, whatever I need to do. So then I'm not going from looking at a screen right to bed. So nighttime practices, we're going to be having more of that uh, incorporated into the program so people can really understand how important mindfulness is even as you drop into sleep and dream time and how you dream and how you awaken those with those dreams it's, is, is really key. So, you know, there's, there's, we're in the beta level of this and I'm so excited and, um, and there will be more to help people, particularly entrepreneurs, really get the most out of um, what it means to bring mindfulness practices into their day and their week. Yeah, I love it. The program is absolutely phenomenal. So you guys should definitely check it out. But I'm also really excited about some of the things that you have to come as well. So tell people where they can find you online and where they can learn a little bit more about it. Yeah, so they can learn more about it at original you. That's the letter U, original letter U dot co dot co. And um, we are basically you can sign up now. We we haven't actually launched the full package until uh, May twentieth will be the first start date. Um, so start, you know join us, sign up, and be a part of our program. We're really going to enjoy uh, meditating together in the mornings. I love it. Okay, so my final question for you is the one I ask everybody. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And that is, how do you work smarter, not harder, and keep things lean in your business? You know, I'm going to go on the coattails of what I just said about nighttime practices, because I think people take that for granted. And um, I think it's, I think that the way you enter the day should start from the day before. And if you can even put it on your phone to remind you, like, this is the time that you say you want to go to bed, or this is the time to start to unwind. I would say, you know, there's a number of things, but I'm going to pick that one because human beings really want to have better sleep and they, they do better when they have sleep and sleep takes care of a lot of issues when you get good sleep, you know? And so I would say that if you can bring the practice of getting off your computer um, and, and start to question your relationship with technology, your phone, your, your computer, 
at nighttime, in particular at nighttime, because I get it. During the day, we're going to do this. We're going to be on the phone. We're going to be on our computer. But before we go to bed, just starting to learn how do I want to transition into sleep? Maybe I want to do some stretching. Maybe I want to do some Qigong. Maybe I'm dehydrated and I need a little water. Maybe I just need to be, maybe I need to read a book. A lot of people like to read a book before they go to sleep. Or, and what am I reading before I go to sleep? What am I taking into my consciousness? Because that does affect the way we wake up. It affects the way we go into our next day. And I think the most important part of caring for ourselves is looking at those times and that we transition into each part of our day, not just like running into the day and not, you know, not questioning, you know, how could I do this better? Or how could I do this with more um, self-awareness and, and what are my needs right now? Um, instead of letting our mind sort of take over and like get into like, you know, whatever we're watching on, on the screen or whatever movie or, you know, we're all used to doing stuff like that, but like really caring for yourself in a way that, um, when you show up at work the next day will be different because you took the time to do it the night before. Yeah, that's so good. It's really just setting yourself up for success, creating your success the day before. That's such an amazing tip. So Christina, thank you so much. This has been such a great episode. I loved everything that you shared. I hope everyone got a ton of value out of this and you can start to incorporate some of the mindfulness and meditation practices. You can find all of the links and things down in the show notes so you can connect with Christina. Christina, any final uh, final tips for people as we wrap up this episode? Yeah, I just thank you so much for having me here. I hope this was helpful for uh, all of you out there. Um, stay curious, stay open and put yourself first, center yourself in those moments when you, when you need to center yourself, even when you're not thinking about centering yourself, you know, let it become so normal, like putting a seatbelt on when you get in the car or, you know, brushing your teeth every day, like let it become, let those practices start to become part of your life so that it doesn't feel like you're doing, you're not doing anything or you're not really interested in, in yourself. You know, you're putting all your attention on everybody else. So I would just say, you know, be willing, be curious and uh, stay centered within yourself. I love it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I will see all of you again next week. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. I hope you got a lot of value and actionable insights from today's show and would love if you take a moment to leave us a review. If you have any questions on today's episode or on how to lean out your business, join us over in our private Facebook community where every week we do live training and Q&A and I'd love to have you be part of the conversation. Head to leanoutmethod.com group to join us. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to the show so you're the first to know when we release a new episode. We'll see you next week.